Hi, Dimitri. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, Jason. How are you? Dimitri, we were talking about earlier how the IRS just put out their, what, top 10 tax evasion cases that just came out, what, this week? So um, it's kind of an interesting time because I know that you advise a lot of companies in terms of just kind of taxes, and you're obviously an outsourced CFO with a tax background. What happens, Dimitri, when people come and talk to you and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about hiring a relative or maybe making certain purchases? How do you guide them to make sure that they are kind of following all the rules when they really mean to be? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And uh, I'll preface it by saying that, you know, the top 10 criminal investigations that the IRS is doing is people that are doing willful things and uh, criminal things. But uh, most people are not trying to do that. So most people are trying to come to us with a simple goal of saving tax dollars. And definitely, they, we like to use strategies that are going to create a lot of savings, you know, aggressive tax savings, but that are always legal. Um, and so where we start with people is documentation and record keeping and measurement, right? You can take deductions, but you can't take them by just pulling them out of thin air, you know, five minutes before the tax return is due. So any type of tax strategy that we want to implement, the first thing is looking at it during the year, understanding what it is and creating a real narrative around it, right? So if we are going to employ a minor child in the business, we make sure that they're actually employed and on the books and everything is happening the right way. Or if we are going to take depreciation deductions for assets, we can have records that support the business use of those assets. So basically, it all starts with record keeping and doing things contemporaneously to when they happen, meaning not after the fact and not right before the tax return, preferably, and definitely not when you're getting audited. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, Dimitri, tell me, yeah. tell me about your company and tell me about kind of like the services that you provide. And when can people come talk to you to make sure that they stay completely in full compliance of the law? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you have the question in your mind, I want to save taxes, you're a great candidate to come talk to us, right? That question is a rational question that should be asked. And what happens a lot of the time is people don't account for the changes that happen in their own business or individual situations and also in the law. The law is changing almost every year, uh, these last few years, and also people's lives are changing. Businesses change in size, profits change, revenues change, um, partners change. So there's a lot of things that are in flux. That's why tax planning is really an every year type of thing. And so we want people to come to us as soon as they think they have something going on or they want to save tax dollars. Usually there's a lot of deadlines during the year. And if you're too late, you know, before year end, <clears throat> excuse me, or if you're too late before uh, the tax filing deadline, we are not going to be able to do anything. So we want people come, coming to us with the question of how to save taxes and then tell us where they're trying to save taxes. If you give us a scenario, a business uh, proposed transaction, we can tell you what record keeping substantiation and law is needed to put that into effect. So definitely come with the request to save taxes, and then we'll try to create a path from there uh, for you. Now, obviously, we don't have all the time in the world to talk about exactly a great tax strategy, but I have heard that um, the IRS are very overwhelmed with the pandemic, and also they're kind of running at a very low kind of uh, employee level because of a lot of things that are going on. Uh, what's some of the tips, like what's the best tip that you have in terms of filing this year for a corporation, um, what should some of the stuff they should be looking out for because of the lack of people working at the IRS? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's actually something um, the IRS is doing is they don't have a lot of people providing basic support services, but they're definitely making big investments in enforcement. And the way the enforcement works with the IRS is they're not going to have time to look at every single thing, and they're not going to have time to capture everything. What they do is they use a lot of computer automated systems right now to try to capture obvious things. Like if you get a 1099 and you don't report your income, the computer can capture that. But the people the IRS is putting in place, they will be looking at the high ticket items. So the way that we talk to corporations is you first have to obviously report everything, um, gross receipts, your full accounting, but at the same time, you have to know what the IRS is looking at. So if you have, let's say travel, meals, um, certain high ticket items, then we would look at those more closely because we know if the IRS was to pick 100 returns out of a bucket and they need to find the 10 that they could actually work on, they would first look at the high ticket items. You know, uh, companies that maybe have costs that don't have the correct relationship with revenues or certain line items that are too high 
or things that change too significantly from year to year without explanation. So that's the way the IRS does enforcement is they're looking for things where they can find dollars and things where they can find dollars are things that are not documented or like kind of um, presented in the, in, in the right way. So accounting, record keeping, I know I said that three times, it goes all the way. And uh, definitely if somebody is coming in, we're looking to make sure that we can tie it all back to real records and that if there are high ticket items, we are protecting against those and being ready for possible inquiries. Luckily, inquiries are still one to three percent, but I, I expect that to increase the next few years. I mean, your knowledge was just invaluable to to business owners. They'd be silly not to reach out to you and try to do this on their own. But uh, on a on a, a different note, on a more fun note, Dimitri, we're in the dead of winter right now. What's uh, what's your favorite winter activity? <laughs> well, you see, during tax season, I really enjoy showing up at the office at six a.m. <laughs> and not leaving till six p.m. That is my favorite. No, I'm just joking around. Um, Honestly, I think my favorite winter activity, I just need to keep my blood moving. So, you know, a lot of indoor workouts, you know, kettlebells, yoga, a little spin class if it comes my way. So, so yeah, just trying to keep, you know, the blood moving and, and making sure my brain is working because it's so cold and so hard to get out of bed anyway. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today. I know uh, tax season's obviously upon us and good luck with everything, okay? All right, awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. Really appreciate it.